Hello, everyone, and welcome to our weekly style snack. Doesn't it feel great to get back into the swing of things and routines after the, uh, I don't know, freedom of the holidays? Freedom and just kind of, well, chaos. It's fun chaos, and we enjoy it, but I personally love um, getting back into my, my structured routines that keep me sane and feel some normalcy. So I love that we're back to our weekly style snacks because I did miss you over the holidays. Um, I wanted to share something, uh, a little special, I guess, a little, I don't know, <laughs> today. Um, you know, a lot of people feel like, or women believe that, or have a hope, I guess, that once their wardrobes, like once they find their style and they'll reach this point where their wardrobe is 100% complete and they'll never have to buy anything else ever again, or it will be rare or um, like there's an end point. And especially with classic style, like we love, that seems like it could definitely be a possibility. And I'm not saying it can't. Um, it's it's quite, uh, some of us don't love change. I'm one of those us. Um, but the truth is most of the work is done. But there will be times that you need to give your wardrobe a review, see what work needs to be done. And then sometimes, sometimes uh, your style can change a little bit. For quite some time, I have felt like I had 100% nailed my style. And I knew exactly what I did and didn't like. Uh, but in the last year, my style has been shifting. And while I was trying not to notice it, I wasn't trying not to notice it. I was flat out ignoring it. <laughs> um, I finally accepted the changes that were happening inside of me. And I have been slowly experimenting and in incorporating some new elements into my wardrobe while removing some old elements that I had previously loved. Uh, basically, you know, we all have our personal billboard. I've talked about that many times that we are what we wear. Our, our appearance is our personal billboard and it's the message that we're communicating to the world, what we want them to know about us, who we are, how we want to be approached. And suddenly my billboard didn't feel like me anymore. Has this happened to you? I would love to know if anyone else has experienced this. And I'd love you to put it in the comments. What felt perfect before suddenly didn't. So why has my personal billboard changed? Well, to be honest, it's because I've changed. I've been on a journey of healing and personal growth, searching for the best version of myself. And as I've been healing and uncovering hidden parts of myself that honestly hadn't felt safe to reveal for most of my life, those parts have been asking to be acknowledged in every way. It started with my feelings <laughs> and my thoughts. It moved into my behavior. Um, and now it's in my style. And guess what? That's not, that's normal. This happens to all of us. Why? Because we aren't static. Each of us grows, we change, we develop. Our lives and circumstances shift. What was perfect before isn't quite right anymore. In fact, many of you have found me because you are experiencing a similar crisis or a major life transition. So during this week's style step, I shared more of the details of my style and identity crisis in the Stunning Style Society. And next week, I'll be diving into the details of how to approach a style crisis when it happens. And that's 
one of the style, that's the next style step for the Stunning Style Society. The style steps are how I walk them through the process of curating their own seasonal wardrobes. And these style step lessons are exclusive to society members. The doors to the society are currently closed, but you can learn more and join the waiting list at stunningstyle.com forward slash society. So you can be the first to know when the spring classic wardrobe guide is available and the doors are open. I share a lot more about my own style and uh, what's happening with me personally in the society uh, because it really has a big effect um, well, on me, but also on my style. And it's something that we all go through. And as I go through these things, I share with them how it affects me, how I'm dealing with it and give them tips to do the same because, uh, I'm not a, a special snowflake. If it's happening to me, it's happening to a lot of people. But today I'm going to share with you some general tips to update your closet, whether it's to adapt to changing trends, maybe your preferences are shifting, maybe your style is changing a little bit, maybe you're changing a little bit, possibly you've had a major life transition, whether you've gone to working at home or you've moved to a different climate, there are so many different things that can change what we need from our closets. And so we're going to uh, talk about how to look into your closet and adapt to that. So classic style isn't for everyone. That's the truth. You either love it or you think it's a major snooze fest. Um, but I love it. And I'm assuming most of you are here because you love it too. It's simplicity at its finest. And it's um, consist of, it consists of timeless pieces. Classic style women prefer clothing that's chic, flattering, and stylish and timeless rather than trendy clothes that look tired after a season or two. And that is the foundation of my wardrobe. And if you truly love classic style, that should be the foundation of your wardrobe. And while I definitely add my own personality to my wardrobe, and I think everyone should, that's what makes it special and unique to you. And that's how we see you on your personal billboard. I favor clothing that's classic and timeless for the majority of my closet. Um, that is critical for every closet is to have, whether you love classic style or not, there are a few classic basics that are the foundation that supports your wardrobe. And we've talked about that in some other style snacks. That's Those are style snacks all on their own. So I'm not going to go too deep into that. But having those basics in place are what will support your wardrobe. So as you're looking at your wardrobe, whether you are shifting things or not, do you have the basics that go along with your shift? Do you have the basics that go along with your new um, lifestyle? Like if you're going to be working from home or if you're having to transition to working at the office after a couple of years off, do you have the basics for the different climate that you're, you've moved to? I've moved to a different climate and I'm having to reevaluate my basics some of them are too, too warm for this warmer climate that I live in. So making sure that you have what you need to support your whole wardrobe is the first step, no matter why your wardrobe is changing. The second thing is to review what you have in your closet. Review each item and see if it's still in good shape. Is it faded, pilling, torn? stretched or ill-fitting. I can't believe how many times I've pulled out last year's clothes to find out that someone shrank them. Or perhaps I indulged a little more over the holidays than I realized. Regardless, sometimes I find that what fit like a glove last year fits more like a sausage casing this year. And I confess my pants are tight right now. And, uh, that must be addressed. <laughs> so I'm also surprised sometimes at pulling things out to find that they have um, developed a little hole 
or that it's just faded a little too much. And I didn't notice it last year because um, I was seeing it constantly. And now I'm seeing it with fresh eyes this season after having uh, stored it away. And even these high quality pieces that I love will eventually wear out over time and they need to be replaced. Do you still actually love every item in your closet? Like I mentioned, your preferences and tastes and style can change. And what you used to wear on repeat every other year may feel tired this year. Trends also change. And while most of my wardrobe is classic, what keeps it current is the modern details and trends that I choose to incorporate into my wardrobe because they feel like me. So do you still love that trendy top that was so much fun last year or two years ago? If you do, keep it, wear it. But it's feel, if it's feeling dated or tired, it's okay to let it go. The whole point of your wardrobe is to have clothes that you love, that you can wear and reflect your personal style. What you loved last year might have changed this year, and that's okay because you've changed. The next step is to remove everything you don't love anymore. I know you have them, those sad clothes that sit in your closet, untouched, unworn, and unloved. And some of them still have the tags on them after all this time. Maybe they were impulse purchases. Others were clearance rack deals that were too good to pass up. I've been there. They could have been gifts. And then there are the items you admired on someone else, but they didn't really suit you. They might occasionally leave the hanger for a quick try on, and then you promptly take them off. There's just something about them that you don't love. Can you figure out what it is? It could be the color, the style, the fit, but there is something off about those items and it's time to let them go. Let go of the shoulds. If you're keeping them because you think you should, I'm here to give you permission to stop. You are never going to wear them. And it is so freeing to finally let it go. Next, make a shopping list. I don't know about you, but when I go to the grocery store without a shopping list, I come home with lots of ice cream, a huge meal, and not a lot of meals. And the same goes for clothing shopping. It's actually worse with clothing shopping. <laughs> it's so easy to get excited about, oh my gosh, look at that cute thing. And it was so good of a deal. How could I pass it up? But once you've decided what stays and what goes, make a list of what you will need to round out your wardrobe. So think of your basics. And I have other ward, um, other style snacks that we'll direct you to when we will add links to when this goes up on my blog later today uh, that will help you with that. But look for... Um, the gaps in your wardrobe. And if you're not sure what to look for, don't worry because I've made putting together your classic wardrobe effortless with the stunning style wardrobe guides. Their seasonal guides feature a curated classic collection of 30 plus pieces and they are catered to classic style and a winter color palette. And then there are options to help you adapt it to your style twist. And along with the curated collection and the links to buy anything you might need, there are 100 outfit templates. So you can wear something different every single day of the season if you want to um, with just this curated collection of clothing. And there are multiple shopping links to each item so that you can find exactly what you want. And as I mentioned before, the doors to the society are currently closed, but you can learn more and join the waiting list at stunningstyle.com forward slash society. Next, shop your closet. Look at what you have. Remember you went through and you have that list of things that you've made that you needed. And it's possible that you forgot 
what you already have. There could be something from another season that you're not thinking about. I have my closet divided up by seasons and by um, item type. And if I get too tunnel visioned and I'm only looking at my current season of clothing, I can forget that there are items from the bumper seasons that can work. And so as you're shopping your closet first, which is actually the first thing we do in the Stunning Style Society, we shop our closets first. It's not about getting a brand new wardrobe every season. It's making the most of what you have and then filling in any gaps. So go through everything. See if you have something that works. It may not be the exact 100% exact item that you're looking for, um, but maybe it works for now and you can either save up for what you need or take your time and find the truly right piece, but you're not having this entire, uh, this huge gap in your wardrobe. And <clears throat> maybe you're craving a color that you haven't um, tried before. You know, colors go through um, trend cycles as well. And there are colors that are available just about every year. Like you can always find red, but the version of red changes from year to year. This year, it's been a very tomatoey red. And so if tomatoey red is, you know, your heart's desire, this is the year to pick it up because it hasn't been around very much. Um, so if you go through your closet piece by piece, like I mentioned in the beginning, I bet you'll find clothes you love that you had completely forgotten about, or you will think of new ways to incorporate them into your wardrobe to fill a need. I find that my tops cross over from spring to summer to fall more easily. And then even from um, fall to winter and spring to winter because of the layering and my bottoms cross over from fall to winter to spring more easily. Um, there could be even more crossover when you think about the layering or rolling up sleeves or rolling up cuffs. But think outside of the season when you shop your closet and you might be surprised by what you already have. Then invest in quality, long lasting foundational pieces. <clears throat> if you want to avoid having to do a major overhaul of your wardrobe every year um, and replacing everything in your wardrobe from year to year, because the quality wasn't good enough to last all those wears and take up and, and put up with that kind of use, seek out durable, classic, high quality foundation pieces you genuinely love. They are worth the investment. If you need to replace an important piece like a coat or a great pair of jeans, look for something that will last you. It's so worth it. Because if you think about it, buying a new $50 coat each year that pills and the threads start coming out is more expensive than buying a $200 coat that's timeless and you can wear for many years. It's a bigger investment initially, but the cost per wear and how long you'll get to wear it, it's a greater savings. So when I'm shopping, I tend to spend the most on shoes, bags, and outerwear. The quality in these items really shows and it elevates every outfit every time. They also tend to be made of more durable materials so they can last forever. Most clothing items are more likely to get a hole in them or fade with repeated wear and washing no matter how high the quality. The one clothing item um, that's worth it to just really spend money on is a fantastic pair of jeans. It is worth every penny. I spend the least on trendy items. I enjoy them for a season or two, like I mentioned before. And by the time they wear out, I'm usually done with that trend anyway. Or something like a white t-shirt, they just get dingy very, even, you know, it doesn't matter how high quality it is. White t-shirts just, they get dingy, they get... If you don't know this, a lot of white clothing is actually dyed white. And as you wash them, the white dye is coming off as well as, you know, just the dirt and things that you pick up. And um, so I don't tend to spend a lot of money on anything that's that's white. Shop smart for your trends. When it comes to trendier pieces, look at them for what they are. 
Accept the fact that they may only be stylish for a few seasons and spend accordingly. Shop around for deals, opt for less expensive trendy pieces um, like a necklace or a t-shirt rather than a coat or a designer bag. Try combing your local thrift store. Um, I, I don't thrift in person, I thrift online uh, and I love it. <laughs> and so many women in the society do it too. I love to shop on Poshmark and eBay to find exactly what I want um, and to find it for less. If you're not sure how much you um, should spend, I have a post that sh that has shares tips about that and we'll link that in the, in the blog post. When it comes to updating a classic wardrobe, it's all about the details. Pairing a classic shirt dress with a trendy pair of shoes can make you look like you just walked out of a magazine. Even if your dress is more than 10 years old, adding in just one or two updated items to an otherwise classic outfit can make all the difference. And then finally, learn from your shopping mistakes. Shopping mistakes are only mistakes if we repeat them. Figure out what you don't love about each item that you're parting with so that you can choose items that you do love next time and get a better value for your money. I don't mean you have to have, um, you don't have to make perfect purchases every time. It's a learning process. It's something that we all do. We learn from mistakes. We are meant to make mistakes. And if it's, um, if you learn something from it, then it truly has value. Sometimes we have to make the same mistake multiple times before we see the pattern, but it still has value. And if you can see that um, the value in those lessons, then you can be much kinder and gentler with yourself. And um, I know I'm guilty of beating myself up over, well, any mistake, honestly, but shopping mistakes, I still make shopping mistakes. And when I change my perspective to view it as, um, an opportunity to learn something about myself, then it's actually a benefit to me. I'm growing through it. So you don't need to buy all new clothes every year to keep your wardrobe looking fresh and updated. If you stay true to your own style, shop your closet, invest in quality foundational pieces and, um, look for deals on the trendy pieces, you'll be able to keep your wardrobe looking fresh and new and just like you every year. So if you're looking for inspiration for, you know, the upcoming seasons, my detailed wardrobe guides feature that curated collection of 30 plus pieces along with the shopping links, 100 outfit templates, and a uh, with outfit calendars every month. So you don't have to pick your own outfit. It's coming soon, <laughs> sooner than you might think, sooner than I can believe, honestly. Um, but updating your wardrobe has never been easier. And you can learn more about that at stunningstyle.com forward slash society and join the waitlist so you'll be the first to know. So let's take a look at the comments. This is always my favorite part when we get to chat. Um, so do you say your name, Nini? Um, I never feel like my wardrobe is complete. I'm always buying clothes, especially jeans. I understand the feeling. I have been there before myself. And what that tells me is that you're not quite sure what your style is, what you really do and don't love. And you're um, trying to fill... Um, holes that you can't see. <laughs> you don't know what goes in that hole. I've done that as well. So figuring out your, um, your personal style is the first step. And I have a course that helps you through that. It's called perfectly put together, find your style. And it's all about you and your style. It's not me trying to convince you to like or wear anything. It's all about you. And in fact, I'm going to be going through my own course again. I'm going to start this week. I I decided on that uh, Monday that, duh, if I'm having this style crisis and I'm 
questioning what I do and don't like. I have my very own course. I can go through it again. So um, I'm going to be posting my homework in that group and going through it just like everybody else does and uh, chatting about it in there. Um, you can learn more about that at Perfectly Put Together. No, that's not true. At stunningstyle.com um, forward slash perfect. And um, so that's what it sounds like to me. You're not sure what you do and don't love. And so you're trying things on maybe that you liked on someone else. I did that forever. Um, following the trends. I also tried that for a long time. Um, wearing what other people told me. I've done that. And once you know what you do and don't love and why, that's the other thing you learn in this course, it changes everything. And you just stop. Um, it was like trying on costumes for me. I was just trying on costumes constantly. Does this feel good? Does this feel good? And uh, it's frustrating. I get, I, yeah, it's really frustrating. Susan says, I can't decide what my style is. Yeah, so the same you know, this, I would give you the same advice. That course will help you so much. And um, it's all about you. So, I mean, you have to do the homework. I guide you through the process, but you have to do the, the work to figure it out. And I'll be doing it. So if you want to join me as I get started, we'll be doing it together. Deb says, fashion mixed with style is supposed to be fun. Oh, I totally agree. It is fun. It's fun when you know where you're going. It's frustrating when you are um, wandering blindly because I've been there. That wasn't fun. I didn't enjoy that at all. I enjoy it a lot now because I know where I'm going and I am not so stressed about it and I can enjoy the scenery. I can enjoy the journey and um, it can be fun again. And the society can make it fun again because it removes the stress. I do all the shopping. I go on a shopping trip. Like I don't, there's no good shopping where I live. So I go to other cities that have big malls. I try on everything, what I can't find in stores. I order, I try on and check everything first. And then I choose these pieces that all go together. They can all be worn together. Um, and then you can just go through and pick if you want to buy anything, if you don't want to buy in anything at all. Uh, there are lots of options and links to the things you can choose. It's a lot of fun. I try on everything for the, for the society members. I do a live try on. They can ask me all kinds of questions and they just get to do everything from the couch because I've done the work for you. I've put together the outfits for you and then you get to have fun mixing it up and making it yours. So uh, the society takes a lot of the stress off and that's one reason the stunners love it so much. Gina says, I'm having trouble with figuring out what colors look good on me. Is it possible that a person can be two seasons? Um, so in perfectly put together course, I have a free bonus. It's the quick and easy way to find the best colors for you. I think that's what it's called. Um, and it's something you do yourself and, um, and it's really, really helpful to help you figure out your best colors. And there are a lot of, um, color theories out there. I don't, subscribe to any specific one. Um, some, I I personally think that color is far more personal than most programs make it out to be. There are definitely the general categories that we fall into, right? But then there are colors that, so I'm a winter. And there are, and it depends on the, you know, the theory system that you, you're looking at, but there are colors that I look amazing in that certain ones will say I shouldn't wear because winters don't wear that. And then others will say, yes, winters can wear this. And I just can't understand why a color that is on my body, a part of my body wouldn't look great on me. So for example, my friend Patty, have, she's a winter and she has the most beautiful olive green eyes. Well, olive green doesn't typically fall into the winter color palette, but if it's beautiful as her eye color, why wouldn't it be beautiful on her? 
it is. <laughs> it is beautiful. So I, I believe a little more in the custom color palettes, but I do and there and I but I do think that the general seasons um, work generally, but then you can tweak each your own color palette. That's what I believe. But I'm not I don't do color consultations. This is just what I believe for myself. I don't try to convince anybody else to believe that. So I've been curating my own personal color palette for myself based on what I'm drawn to and what I can see very obviously looks good on me. Sonia says, yes, my personal billboard has definitely changed several times over time. I, yeah, I mean, we change, right? And the message that we want to present to the world changes, sometimes for better and sometimes not. You know, when I went through my lost years, I was trying to disappear for unhealthy reasons. And so I changed my personal billboard to be invisible. Um, and that wasn't, tr it wasn't honest about who I was, but I changed it, but it, I was ch trying to force a different message, not a true message. But, you know, now the changes that I'm going through, they're true and they're honest to me and they're a better version of me, a healthier, happier version of me. And so um, those changes that I need to make on my billboard reflect that. So do you pronounce your name Loie? I like to pronounce people's names right. Since I've gone silver, I've had to reevaluate my look. I'm mostly silver. I haven't gone silver, but um, I, I hear a lot of women say that. I'll have to wait and see what happens when I do. But um, I've, and mine is silver, like shiny silver, like my dad's. Um, and when I'm ready to grow it out, I'll love it and it'll be beautiful. I'm just, I'm just not ready. Um, Gina says, I agree with Loi. I have decided no hair dye. Now with my gray hair, I can't figure out my season. See, I just don't know if I agree with that your season changes just because your hair color changes. I, I haven't done the hair. I mean, I, I, I've had different hair colors. I've dyed my hair different hair colors. And in general, I've stuck to the winter color palette. I had some years where I deviated, but those winter colors still looked great on me. I've known I was winter since I was eight. My mom was into color me beautiful and um, I was draped by the color consultant. Um, but when my hair colors changed, my color best colors didn't change. I haven't done the gray hair, so I can't speak to that personally, but that's something that's always confused me. Um, but everyone has to do what feels best for them. Annette says, thank you for this. By the way, your makeup is on point today. Thank you, Annette. Can I just tell you, I finally found the perfect foundation match for my skin. I was telling my husband that <laughs> anytime, my whole life, anytime I bought new makeup, I felt like my life was going to change. This new lipstick is going to change my life. I'm telling you this new foundation that perfectly matches my skin is one of the most exciting <laughs> makeup finds of my whole life because I have very red skin, very pink skin, and all foundations are too um, yellow, too golden. And so it, I put it on my face and it didn't match my neck or my chest, especially because I have sun damage here in here not as much on my face but i definitely have sun damage here and so it's even redder and pinker here and then that yellowy foundation made this look even more red and splotchy so maybe that's it because that's the only thing i've changed is my foundation color finally matches my skin so thank you that made me feel really good Hi, Lynette. Lynette says, hi, I hope I haven't missed much. Just joined. Well, Lynette, um, in good news, as soon as we're done here, the replay will be available so you can take a watch. 
Loey says, I have a long wool coat I purchased at a thrift shop that was from the late 40s. The lining is in excellent condition and it looks great with my husband's 1947 convertible. Oh, Loey, if you have a picture of that, I would love to see it. I believe it. I mean, those classic items are classic. My friend Maddie, if you're not, you sh if you don't know Maddie Curte, um, you should follow her on Instagram. She is all about, and I think that's just her handle on Instagram. She's all about vintage style and she is killing it. And she thrifts her finds. Um, I'm just looking really fast. Just, I think it's Maddie.Curte. Oh, underscore. Maddie, M-A-D-D-I-E underscore Curte. And she might be here. Maddie, if you're here, put your Instagram up there. She does vintage style. So um, if you love that vintage look, you should follow her. She's always finding fabulous thrifted things. And she just knocks it out of the park. She's fabulous and inspiration and a wonderful person. But if you have a picture of the coat, and if you have a picture of the coat plus the convertible, I would love to see that. That sound like I'm having Hollywood dreams right now. Let's see. Maria Francesca says, I recently found you and I'm loving your content. Well, welcome. And I'm so glad. Thanks for joining me. And I'm glad that you're loving it. Stacy says, I recently gained 20 pounds. My clothes are very tight and some do not fit. I've started a fitness and health journey for 2022 and intend to lose all of it. What can I do with my wardrobe in the meantime? Stacy, I want to sing You Are Not Alone <laughs> from Michael Jackson. That song is what popped into my head. You are not alone. Um, and in the meantime, so I would go through and see. So but each body shape d gains weight differently. So I have a pear shape. And when I gain weight... I gain it in my hips and thighs and seat. So I've, I've got some, um, my pants are all too tight right now, like really too tight. And that's because that's where I gain weight, uh, from the holidays. And, and I've been, I was stuck in bed with long COVID and literally not moving. So add holiday plus zero movement and now my pants don't fit, but my tops fit okay, because that's not where I gain weight. So some of your clothes might still fit okay. And if you know, you know, so first take a look at that. My primary problem is my pants. Most of my tops are okay. Um, so figure out what you have that still works. And then if you just, you just need some things to get by, buy just a few basics secondhand, make yourself a mini capsule, get like three neutral bottoms that work, or, you know, if, if bottoms are your problem, that's my problem. Um, and get, uh, or get, you know, a few neutral tops that work, but, or if you need both, just get a mini capsule. And that's what, um, i you know, I have people ask me about this all the time who are in the weight loss process just get yourself a mini capsule. And it's also a great way to experiment with style because as you know, as you go from one size down to the next and you're like, I loved this, didn't so much love that. When you get your next mini capsule, you know, yes, I want these things. No, I don't want those things. And let's maybe try this out a little bit. So um, just get a few pieces that work for now, especially if you work outside the house or you need to leave the house a lot, like you have to have you have to have pants. It's, it's, it's actually required by law that you have pants on when you were, when you leave the house. So, um, just get a few things and it'll make you feel a lot more comfortable and more confident. Um, because we all, I mean, in every size you're beautiful and just having properly fitting clothes makes all the difference. And honestly, I'm not unhappy with my size. I'm unhappy that my clothes don't fit. I actually kind of like that my rear has filled out a lot, quite a bit. It was looking kind of flat, um, but I don't want to replace all my pants. I can't afford it. I just want, I just want my, if I could expand my clothes a little bit, I'd be totally happy where I am right now, but I can't, and I don't want to go buy new ones. 
Jeannie says, what is the makeup brand? Um, this foundation is, uh, it's the Bare Minerals. It's the liquid makeup. I used to use the powder makeup for years when we lived in Atlanta. And then we moved out west to the desert and it was so dry, I couldn't wear it anymore. And now we've moved back to Tennessee where I'm from. Um, and now they have a liquid version. And so I've talked to a lot of really um, unhelpful people at Ulta. I mean, intending to be helpful, but not knowledgeable and gotten some terrible makeup matches. Um, but this girl, I, you know, I explained it. I was like, listen, I have a lot of red in my skin. You can see here, like, you can see how red my, well, it's a little redder, extra red because I've got this turtleneck on and it's like pressing against my skin. But I was like, I need my foundation to match my neck and my chest. Not necessarily my face because my face is fairer than this because this is so damaged. And I need pink, not yellow, not neutral either. And so she showed me and um, went straight to the perfect one. Their, their powder ones are also really good, but I went with the liquid one because it was just such a spot on match. And then I did get the um, mineral veil that you put on over it. I love that it, it like blurs your, it's a fine, fine powder that makes your pores look finer. I have big pores um, and it make, it just makes my face look it's like a little, like a filter, but it's not heavy. This doesn't feel heavy. The coverage is really good. This isn't sponsored. I just really liked it. Um, and if you want, I don't, I don't know the exact name of color. I'd have to go up to my bathroom and look, but I can put a link to the one I got. Uh, Jean says, exactly. I determined that I am a neutral that leans cool. My eyes are sage green hazel with chestnut brown hair. I would avoid rust and brown but have been trying colors that god gave me and i love them so happy chocolate brown has been having a moment these last few years oh <gasps> you know how much i'm loving my chocolate brown that's a color that i brought back that i was told i couldn't wear i used to have it and i loved it and i let it all go and i've been really sad and missing it and i brought it back and i'll t black is my best color this navy also excellent but the that dark chocolate brown I get compliments everywhere I go, every time I wear it, I glow in it. And so they were wrong. And I'm glad you're getting yours back. Cause if you have chestnut brown hair, why wouldn't chestnut brown look good on you? Right? That doesn't make any sense to me. Lynette says, who did it for you? What brand and color? Love to know. So I was just at my local Ulta but I'll, I don't know the name of the color. I'll have to go back upstairs. I'll go, when we're done here, I'll go get the, I'll go get the bottle and I'll post a link here of, um, uh, the exact color that I'm wearing. Well, she gave me two colors because when I get, well, so if I, when I get some sun, it's even worse. So then I also got the next one up because if I do get sun, I'll take that darker one that would definitely forever be too dark for me. I don't, ever get that dark but something I do is I'll take a darker color and just put a little bit with my fair color and mix up my own custom color so I also got the next one darker so that I can make custom mixes although I'm determined to stay out of the sun forever now and protect my skin but I'll I'll post a link I don't I don't remember the name of the color Michelle says I found that the intensity of colors changed when I stopped coloring my hair I still wear cool colors but not as intense as a winter. Well, I guess I'll have to see when I do it. I'm still not 100% silver and it's a very odd and unflattering scattering. Like from here forward, I'm 100% silver and back here, I'm not. And so it would look weird if I grew it out now. But when I'm ready, I guess I'll report back on my findings. Deborah says, I'm with you on the foundation match. People try to counter my pink with yellow also. I know it's not that it needs to be countered. It needs to match. When you try to counter it, it makes it worse. I mean, if this was all you could see of me, fine. But it's not. It just makes my neck and my chest look even redder. You're doing me no favors. And I look like a floating head. It's not good. Just, yeah, no. 
it, it's like trying to give yourself a tan with foundation and then this is too light. It looks just as dumb. So yeah, Maddie says, oh, you're so sweet. Oh, Maddie, I'm not sweet, <laughs> but I am honest. I love Maddie's retro style. It's not my style, but I love watching it on her. I, it makes me wish it was my style, but it's perfect for her. And she put her handle here. It's Maddie underscore Kerte, K-E-R-T-A-Y on Instagram. You'll love her. Also, she's amazing. Not just her style, just everything about Maddie's amazing. Uh, Cherry says, I thought your makeup looked flattering too. I thought maybe it was because you were feeling better. I am feeling a little bit better, but it's the makeup. <laughs> it's more the makeup. It's not, I don't look jaundiced. It's amazing with the right color. And I've looked my whole life. I have. This color wasn't always there, but it's, it's, I'm so, so happy to have found this. I feel so much prettier. Like this is my skin color. That's my skin color is the best color for me. Your skin color is the best color for you. I don't want to change it. I don't, I didn't ever want to change it. And I kept trying to explain that to them. I just want you to match my skin and just get a little smoother of a, you know, palette. That's what that, makeup should just highlight your best features. That's my personal opinion. Just highlight my features. I don't want to change anything about my face and I don't want to change the color of my skin. I mean, like it, and that, like it, I'm just talking about like if you have rosacea or something, like when I had acne, oh yeah, I wanted to cover and change the color of that. No kidding, right? Or if you have rosacea, it's just too, I mean, sure. But I'm not dealing with that um, with rosacea or something like that. I'm not trying to counteract that. Or if you have dark circles, you want to counteract that? Yeah, go ahead. But in general, the general cover color of my skin, that's what I wanted. And I just... Yeah, those are, I tried so many. I was either too pale or too yellow or anyway. I think it's the make I think it's the makeup. I'm so validated right now in my makeup choice. Y'all noticed. Thank you. Um, Stacy says you're welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> she says thank you. I say you're welcome. Lynette says bonus is bare minerals liquid has SPF 20 as well. Well, and that's why my face does not have the same amount of sun damage as my chest and my neck do because my makeup has always had SPF in it. But I don't I don't carry my makeup down to here because I don't want to get it on my clothes. Um, and so that's why my face is lighter. It's always a lighter color than this part of my body or any part of my body. And it's also why I don't have as much sun damage, but yeah, the, the SPF all the way. And my, my moisturizer has SPF in it as well. So anyway, um, this has been so much fun. Thank you all for joining me. I always always uh, enjoy the chit chat part at the end. And I hope you'll join me again next Wednesday at our usual time, 1 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays. And we'll be chatting um, with, for another style snack. And again, if you want to learn more about the Stunning Style Society, the um, style steps, the classic wardrobe guides, you can go to stunningstyle.com forward slash society to learn more and join the waiting list. Because I really look forward to seeing you there when the doors open again for spring. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. And I will see you soon.